This is Just The Job. Kia ora and welcome to Just The Job, the show that could help you discover your perfect career. And this week we've got three more exciting careers for you to look at and you never know, one of them could just be what you're looking for. Plus at the end of the show we're going to catch up with Sarah from Career Services and she's got some excellent tips to help you nab the job you want. In today's show, Shay is on the job to investigate the finer points of making the perfect road. Karen finds out if the role of a gas technician could be just the job for him. And Kate likes to help people, so we send her out with a public health nurse to see if that could be a career for her. But first up, let's join Shay, who's out on the road and about to discover the skills involved in pavement surfacing. Hi, my name's Shay, and I just got my licence, and I've always wondered how roads were made. From chip seal to asphalt, one of the main jobs in making roads is laying the final surface. Richard McRoy manages an asphalt paver crew for Heb Construction, and he'll be showing Shay how to get a surface that makes driving that much smoother and safer. Hi Shay, I'm hey, Richard. Man. Let's go check out the site. Cool. Good, yeah. Shay needs to get to grips with the safety um, aspects um, of the job before heading out. Health and safety is our main focus when it comes to working on the road, and a big part of it is wearing the correct personal protective gear, making sure that everyone watches each other's backs. That's how we minimise any kind of accidents or incidents. The first type of surface they will look at is chip sealing, which is used all the time on country roads. But they need dry weather to get the right results, so work is being delayed and Richard has set up a demonstration in a chip stockpile site. Uh, chip sealing consists of bitumen, which is in this sprayer truck here, and chip, which is in this uh, six-wheeler chipper truck here. Chip sealing gives skid resistance and it waterproofs. The sprayer truck has a lot of expensive computer controlled hardware to get the spread right, but there are still tight corners that need to be done by hand. It has to be uh, pretty fussy and it has to be uh, pretty straight, it can't be like lumps and that on the ground. Here we go. Uh, that's sort of it, but it's uh, more like a rush thing like that. More or less just a place. So is that so you get a nice even So you get a nice model? even spread, yeah, and everything's not lumpy and, and that. Oh, yeah. So how do you think I did? Uh, yeah, you did all right. Just um, a few lumps here and there and um, a bit more practice and you'll probably get there. Shay isn't going to get time to practice because he's off to help lay asphalt on the main road just two kilometres from his home. A coat of chip seal has been applied to this road but there are gaps that need to be waterproofed and that's Shay's job. OK, Shay, this is a spray wand. Just spray your emulsion with. What you do is you open it here by turning this tap, and it comes out the other end. And you give it a nice even spray along that edge there, and it helps the hot mix stick to the road. Cool. So uh, you'll do the spray. As long as you are motivated and you're keen to learn, really that's all that's required if you start down the bottom and work your way through the crew. With the surface prepared, they bring in the asphalt paver. The asphalt comes off the truck at 150 degrees and moves through the machine on conveyor belts. The bottom of the paver spreads the asphalt down and compacts it to a smooth finish. Without a paver, you would have to do it with a, a wheelbarrow, whereas nowadays you can do up to a 1,000 tonne a day if you've got everything working correctly. So how long before we could get cars driving on this pavement? On this particular one, uh, once they're finished at the top of the road, probably 10, 20 minutes after that, we'll open it up to the traffic. 20 minutes later and Shay is preparing the other lane. And he's quickly on to a new job. The paver extends to go around corners, but there is still a bit of hand screeding that needs to be done, and another job that Shay can get into. Now what you want to do is try and leave it like a, like a five mil lip, and then once he rolls that, that should compact down to the top of the curb there. The guys on the ground, they really love the um, variety of the job, whether it be from up north in Mongaray on State Highway 1 or over in the Coromandel. And uh, a lot of the guys get benefit from seeing the countryside and working outside every day. The intersection is complete, and while the boys set up for the next part of the job, Shay talks to paver operator Ming. I've been in the uh, in the industry for about 15 years now, Shay. I uh, spent the last five years with Heb Bitumen. Uh, so it's a really good job. Uh, as you can see, being with us uh, this morning, this piece that we've done here, you know, some of us live around here, and to see us do a job like this, 
we drive past this every day, so we get a good visual on it, and we know that we actually had something to do with that road. You know, cool. so it makes us makes the boys feel really good yep. about the jobs that we've done out here. Yep. Yeah. But this job won't finish itself, and Shay is there to help complete a repair on a section of road where the drain has given way. With our crews, they all get on really well together and they like to have fun and look after one another. So that's a key attribute for a uh, potential staff member. So uh, what we're going to do now is um, we're going to mark out a straight line for our paver driver to follow so he can keep a nice straight line so it looks good. Um, norm normally do that for on big long runs like on motorways and, and highways. Awesome, bro. He's done a lot of work, so as a reward, Shay gets to sit up top as Ming lays out the asphalt. Um, Shay went really well. He seemed keen to learn and keen to give, give everything a go. I enjoyed just hanging out with the guys today. It was real cool. And I'm gaining some good job experience, and it was just real good fun. There are nine qualifications available in pavement surfacing, starting with a level two course in application and site skills. As workers gain experience, they can complete certificates in plant operation, asphalt paving machine operation, up to site supervision and design courses. Most apprentices start off helping shovel and clean up. Normally after three months they progress to driver, labourer and then on to foreman, supervisor. Experienced pavers may set up their own businesses. Warang Shea, you'll be making roads up and down the country before you know it if you do end up in that career. Great job. When we come back, we're going to catch up with Kieran and see if he's found just the job when he checks out a career as a gas technician. This is Just The Job. Welcome back to Just The Job, where every week we take a look at three diverse careers to give you an insight into some of the amazing opportunities that are out there waiting for you. Now, this next career we're about to look at would suit someone mechanically minded and well organised, so let's see how Kieran gets on as a gas technician. Hi, I'm Kieran Ray. I'm 17. I attend Wanganui High School. Today I'm going to go and check out what it means to be a gas technician. First stop for Kieran is GasNet, where engineering manager Wayne Armashaw can show him the ropes. Hello, you must be Kieran. Yes, Samuel Wayne. Pleased to meet you. Come on then. Gas technicians work in a range of roles related to extracting and treating gas through to installing and maintaining the networks which carry it. Craig, um, 22 point of place. Gonna put the new service connection on there and put the meter on, that'll be good. GasNet are responsible for the network of pipes supplying gas to homes, businesses and heavy industries in and around Whanganui. Good training is part of the job and first up for Kieran is an exercise in the depot yard finding the source of a hidden gas leak. So how does this thing work? What it does is it sends a signal down into the ground and we have a copper wire that's running along our pipe and the radio signal picks that up and transmits it to the receiver. So now they can track the exact path of the pipe before switching to a gas detector to find the leak. We're not having any luck walking along this line. Yeah. Yeah, what gas normally does is finds its easiest route out. So knowing that, where do you think you should look? Uh, probably in a circle around and where it could be. Yep, yeah, we normally uh, try and find like cracks or manholes. Yep. Uh, gather gas gathers in manholes, and if, so if there's anything close like that to the area, we can try looking around there, eh? Yep. So that crack there could be good? Could be good. Whoa, what does this hear me? That means you've now found our, our scent leak. The modern gas industry, with its new materials, technology, and safety procedures, is now the safest of professions. So what happens if I wasn't wearing one of these masks in a gas leak? Uh, you'd get as asphyxiated. The gas would be too much for you, and you'll get a rush. Yeah. So, there you go. How's that? Now yeah. you can talk like Darth Vader yeah. and be Star Wars. <laughs> this should be impressed. No. I am your father. That's cool. Gas can knock you out very quickly, but flammability is also a very important safety issue. Teamwork is very important. We have to work in a team. A lot of the work that we do requires us to buddy up with someone and um, to look after each other. Escape gas only needs to find a flame for an explosion to occur. This would be a very hazardous situation where there's a lot of gas in the air, a lot of gas rushing through the pipe. Yeah. Um, 
and we need to control it. And in a real situation, pinching off the leak and replacing the faulty section would be critical. How are you feeling? Is it? Yeah, it's really hard to push down. Whilst gas technicians have to be prepared for emergencies, thankfully they are rare and much of their work actually involves maintaining a reliable network for customers to use. This is a new house on the new subdivision. This subdivision's not that old. And today they've decided they want gas. Now, this is our distribution network, the big pipe down the bottom. It feeds around 10,000 houses in Wanganui. Are there any dangers here? The power. That one right there, the power ducting is orange. You've also got water just out here. They have to run a pipe from the main supply to the house. But before they can do that, the mains pipe must be cleaned and a special saddle attached. And the technician needs to have a mechanical aptitude, enjoy working outside in the field, and uh, have a good attitude to his work. For security, a seamless weld of the parts is needed. Of course, sparks are a no-no, so it's an internal element which melts the plastic parts together. So how long does the welding last? The main pipes, the service pipe, will last 50 years in the ground. Problem with coming to a sand place, you get sand all in your ears. In your ears? Oh, no, just sand everywhere. Oh, it's about to say, gee, because I don't get it in my ears. <laughs> Jamie, three months into his apprenticeship, is making huge progress, and despite the sand, Karen is all ears. How much different stuff do you get to do in this career? Uh, as you're an apprentice, is, uh, everything's different every day. Emergencies are also good as well. We'll be at a job doing something like this, something pretty basic, and we'll get a phone call. It's us, we're straight in the van, and uh, we're out of here. I guess you also see lots of new people, lots of different people. Uh, yeah, lots of new people. We're quite friendly with um, most of the local contractors. We know them pretty well. But um, other than that, we, um, we sort of stick within our, within our team. We've got a close-knit um, group of technicians, and uh, we're all quite good friends from there. Now, what do you think we use soapy water for? Make sure if there's any leaks and you haven't crimped it properly. Um, if there is a leak or, um, or anything like that, uh, the soapy water will bubble, obviously. Once the gas goes live to the house, gauges are used to check that everything's hunky-dory and the hard work is covered up. But it's not just residential clients using the network. Large industrial plants also need servicing. So, Karen, we've just put a gas meter in recently, like an open country dairy processing plant here. We're just doing a few checks on it to make sure the supply is safe and uh, reliable. We're checking the gas meter and corrector to start with. They're just checking that the, uh, the temperature and the pressure transducers are working OK. They're checking that the filter is clean, inspect it and make sure it's clean before putting it back. And then they'll test the relief and make sure the overpressure relief is working OK. These are all checks that we do six monthly just to make sure that everything's safe and working correctly. So did Kieran have a gas today? Uh, this experience for me was very new because I hadn't really seen this line of the industry or any gas type related things before. So it was new for me, I enjoyed it a lot. Karen did well today. He showed an interest in um, things mechanical. He was very keen to learn. He had a great attitude. Um, he did very well. To get your national certificate in gas network operations level three, you should be interested in maths, science and technology and be able to think logically and analytically. It's useful if you enjoy working outdoors with tools and machinery, and you'll need to be able to work as part of a team. Most skills are learned on the job, and further education and training is available through the Extractive Industries Training Organisation. Well, what a great career, and definitely one with plenty of variety and challenge. So if you think this career could be for you, then go jump on our website. We have plenty of information on all the careers featured throughout the show. After the break, we're going to catch up with Kate, who's looking at a career out in the community. This is Just The Job. You're watching Just The Job, and if you're trying to figure out what career path to follow, then make sure you join us each week, because this show could spark a turning point when it comes to your work life. All right, we're going to join Kate now and see how she goes when she joins a public health nurse out on the job. Hi, I'm Kate. I'm interested in nursing, and it'll be great to find out what a public health nurse does. Public health nurses are responsible for supporting infants, children and young people to be well and to help them develop healthy habits. Hi. Hi there. I'm Cindy. I'm Kate. Nice oh, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Cindy Gibb is a public health nurse in Canterbury and she's taking Kate along to help her create a healthy and happy community. So what we're going to do today is talk to some five-year-olds about keeping themselves nice and clean. 
Kate gets some basic training, so she's ready to help take a class of five-year-olds at Belfast Primary School. Good afternoon, Room 2. And can you guys say good afternoon to Kate as well? Good afternoon, Kate! Hi, guys. Cute. We're going to learn today about hygiene and keeping healthy. And so we're going to talk about washing our hands and blowing our noses and learning how to sneeze properly, all right? Are you guys ready to do that? Yes. All right, let's get started. Public health nurses are registered nurses that work all throughout the country. We mostly work with children between the ages of 5 and 18, and we work with their families as well. We work trying to promote healthy lifestyles and healthy living. Ah, 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 achoo! Who got sneezed on? Did anyone feel some water? Yes. Yeah? I didn't. Now that wasn't a real sneeze, was it? No, it was a pretend sneeze. When we're working with young people, um, you need to find a way of putting the message across in a way that they can understand, in a way that appeals. And so just using things as, as age appropriate as you can really, really helps to drive that message home. Okay, well first you need to breathe in through your mouth and close your lips tightly, blow out firmly into your tissue and put your tissue in the bin. And it's really important to wash your hands after that. Do you guys think that you can blow your nose? So the value of teaching a child when they're five about how to look after themselves and how to be hygienic means that they're developing that responsibility for those skills, which means that as they grow, they're not as reliant upon somebody else to teach them that. Um, so that means that as they have teenage years and even into adulthood, they have um, those concepts about what makes to, to keep yourself healthy. The role of having a public health nurse in our school is invaluable for us. I mean, the child's general health is very, very important to their, to their learning, to their brain activity, and it's good to know that we've got someone a professional that we can go to if we need to ask any questions. Having taught the children about the transference of bugs and effective hand washing, Kate and Cindy are off to their next appointment. All right, Kate, welcome to Avonside Girls High. Now, we're here, we're going to hold a youth health clinic today at lunchtime, and students are going to come and see us for a whole variety of, of health needs that they might have. Okay. So um, let's go and see who's going to turn up and see us today. Cool. All right. Cindy briefs Kate on some of the things that might come up during the clinic. Um. And with the lunchtime bell, they get their first client. The curtains are drawn and the conversation is completely confidential, so students can talk about issues that may be difficult to discuss with parents or other adults. I wanted to talk about, I really want to quit smoking. Okay, so, um, so tell me a bit more about that. You're smoking at the moment. Yes. How much are you smoking? Um, four to five cigarettes a day. Four to five, um, yeah. Mostly just after school with my friends. Okay. Many people start smoking when they're in their teenage years and, and just continue to do so because of its addictive nature, okay. um, which obviously causes a lot of damage to their health and also financially it has impacts on the country as a whole as well. So if we can help young people to stop smoking when they're still at school, then that's, that's really fantastic. There are a range of quit smoking support programs available in New Zealand, which are also helpful for you. And there's also lots of other support groups that are available in New Zealand, such as you've probably heard of Quitline, have you heard of them? Yep. It's Cindy's job to get kids in touch with these options, but it's not just smoking. There's a whole lot of issues that Cindy deals with at her clinics. So who wants to tell me, why are you, why are you guys here today? Well, we just wanted to know more about nutrition, health, eating and stuff. I came into public health nursing because I really want to make a difference in, in the health of New Zealanders and this is one way I can do it. I can help people while they are healthy and help to keep them healthy rather than see them when they are sick and then to try and help them to, to get back to that healthy stage. I love working with children and young people and to work alongside their families to have that, that chance to be in the best possible health place that they can be. The lunchtime clinic is over and they have another appointment to travel to. Cindy is working with Angela to help make some important decisions about her four-year-old's health. I can see here that um, except for the four-year-old immunisation, she's doing really good and she's had all of those. But that's okay because she can have that 
sewing, can't she? Yes, she can. Okay. The role of public health nurse is really broad and varied. Um, no two days are the same. You are constantly um, having the phone ring and, and you don't know who's going to be on the end of the phone. As, and, and so it's ever changing. If I look at my diary, every single day is different. I have different plans. We go to meetings. We, um, you know, out in the community helping to support out there. Um, it's just, it's really, really different and really exciting. Kate has experienced quite a few different aspects of the job, so how did she measure up? Yeah, she went really well. She, um, she showed that she's obviously really enthusiastic about working with children and young people. Well, I love working with the primary school children and yeah, it felt really great to help out. To become a public health nurse, you need to have a Bachelor of Nursing, which takes three years full time to complete. You also need to be registered with the Nursing Council of New Zealand and have a current annual practicing certificate. Public health nurses take part in regular training courses, workshops and seminars to maintain their skills and knowledge. Well done Kate, if you decide on a career working with young people and families, then a public health nurse could be the career for you. So thank you to Kate and to everyone else who featured in today's program. To help you out that little bit more, Career Services has loads of information and resources available to you. And here's Sarah with some great advice. The world of work has really changed. 30 years ago, people starting work gave their loyalty to employers in exchange for job stability. But in the current economic climate, things have changed. The New Deal is talent for opportunity. So it's really important for you to know the talents you have to offer an employer and which opportunities would motivate you. Call 0800 222 733 to chat to a careers advisor about the talents you have to offer in the world of work. Well, we hope you enjoyed this week's show. We'll be back again next week with three more exciting careers plus loads of tips to help you get the career you want. If you'd like any more information about the careers you've seen here today or just more info about making that right career choice, then jump on our program website at tvnz.co.nz slash just the job. Good luck and I'll see you again next week. Zealand on air.